<laughs> Welcome back to another great edition of the Cross Border Interviews with Chris Brown. I am your host, as always, Chris Brown. And today is a weird day because we are going to talk about a subject that we've talked about in the past with a guest that we've talked about in the past, but we are setting up a month-long series that we are going to be holding in June around independent authors from here in Canada, from the States, and around the world. So in order to talk about independent authors, I thought to myself, who is the best independent author that I know and I've had on the show and would come on the show at the drop of a hat? And that is, as always, our horror expert, David Mercer. David, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Glad, glad, glad to be here and, and and thank you for that thank you for the compliment there that, that which actually which one's the hard I forget anyway, whatever for those who are listening on the audio version of this not the youtube he was trying to figure out which side of his heart his heart is on so i'm not sure if it's different down the states but in canada it's the left it, side it could be in, you know being a hard horror author sometimes people don't think i have oh, one so. oh. i love that character what do you mean they're dead Oh, <laughs> sorry. That everyone dies in your books unless I, you don't kill them and then they don't die. Exactly. I try to kill as many as I can. So if, um, if, they, didn't, if they didn't want to die, they shouldn't have been in one of my books. <laughs> <laughs> they should not have reared their ugly head in your mind when you were writing the book. That's it. Is it that hard to ask? Seriously. Exactly. But in all seriousness, independent authors, we are seeing a massive uptick in independent published authors here in Canada and even probably down the States. I'm finding more and more people independently publishing their own work. Now, as an independent author yourself who has published three books, one which is going to be given away, uh, audio version, which we'll be talking about later on in the episode. There you go, Living Death. Uh, I will be talking about that a little bit later and how you can win a free audible copy of it. So please stay tuned. But as someone who has independently uh, published three books to date, what advice would you off the bat, right off the top of the show, what advice would you give to someone who is sitting down in front of their computer right now and about to put pen to paper or fingers to keyboard, that just doesn't make more sense than pen to paper, and potentially starting their first book. What advice would you give them right here, right now? Something I wish somebody would have told me. And, and that is, you know, it's, it's going to be a little bit after you start writing. So it's not right when you first start. And we'll talk about some things right there. So I, I'm breaking the rules a little bit. hope that's okay. But the biggest thing that cost me was listening to the first set of critics. And those first set of critics are going to be your family. They're going to be your friends. And maybe they're gonna take it seriously. Maybe they're gonna think it's a joke. Maybe they're gonna you know, make some offhand comment. And when they do that, for me, it, it cost me 20 years. I, I could have been writing 20 years ago. So who knows what, where I would be now as far as my skill level and all that. But I wrote, wrote a, a story, I'm, I may go back and, and republish that you know, some, someday, but it was something where I had, you know, wrote it, shared with somebody that I cared about, thought that, hey, this is going to be the story. And next thing I know, I get, you know, bad feedback. And, and it was something that I was like, well, you know, it just maybe I'm just writing is not for me. So I just put it down. Uh, and then lo and behold, you know, COVID happened and everybody's sitting at home. And instead of just, you know, binging out on lots of different, you know, online TV shows and stuff like that, I decided I'm going to go ahead and, and produce something. I'm not just going to sit on my couch and do nothing. And so, so the best advice I can give you is, is, you know, you know, if somebody's giving you good advice or advice on your work and it's, you know, uh, it's, it's good criticism, that's fine. Take it, use it, you know, learn from it, what have you. But don't take it to heart in that, you know, because they're not, you know, and unless you're talking to, you know, maybe Stephen King directly to say, hey, Stephen, what, what do you think of my new book? You know, <laughs> it's, it, it's something that, you know, they, they have as much experience publishing books as you do. So take, take that for what it's worth. On that note, just on that statement of listen to your first critic. I want to challenge you a little bit here because you're an independent author, as I've said numerous times in the first few minutes of the show, but 
wouldn't be the fir- wouldn't the first critic be yourself? Wouldn't that first critic be yourself of, okay, is this good enough to even publish? Because I can, when I first started this show, and I know it's apples to oranges for comparing uh, writing to podcasts and uh, online shows, but when I first started the show, my harshest critic was myself. Because I yeah. always thought to myself, I, I, it, no one's going to listen, no one's going to do anything. Why am I even doing this? So do you have to not listen to yourself in essence to say, okay, I need to just do it but I need to also listen to where my mind is going on this as well. Like, how did you balance that opportunity against knowing what you want to write comparing to, are you going to publish it? Because that's where I think a lot of people are concerned and a little bit more apprehensive to even start. There's one right now that I've been trying to write for a while, but the reasons I'm, I'm hitting blocks on it is more because of the subject matter than 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 the actual writing ability at this time it's 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 about a serial killer told from the first person of the serial killer and so where your head has to go for that and then i'm 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 reading back some of the things going wait a second are people going to think this is me thinking this you know are they going to realize you know, I had somebody, you know, ask about one of my books going, hey, is that this person? And I'm like, no, no, everybody's fictional. And, and, I, and I just, you know, you worry somewhat what people are going to think. So as far as for being your own critic, critic, yeah, you've got to get out of your head when it comes to the writing. Uh, there are times to focus on editing and, and being a critic of the work. There are times where you need to focus on marketing and, and, and other things. So, but when it comes to the writing itself, you know, the best thing, the best advice I can give is, is figure out a pattern that works for you, whether it's early in the morning, whether it's late at night, whether it's during your lunch break, what have you, where you're setting down, you write. And, and for a while I had a pretty good ritual of where, you know, Hey, I have this type of beer beside me. I'm going to sip on this beer while, while I write. And, and with, with certain music playing in the background, and that worked pretty well for, for a long time. Uh, it's something where those rituals may change depending on the book and stuff like that. But yeah, even even with yourself, you have to get out of your head because you can't be thinking, oh, what if I say this? Uh, I've, I've got a, a friend and she writes poetry, but her poetry, it's Bailey G. Uh, I'm going to tell her to, to contact you for that for that. Uh, the, the show month long series yep yeah yeah and and she's got a, a a a her latest book is called the joys of being alive and it's a poetic story of somebody of a, of a woman's journey through recovery so she went through a whole lot of things in her life and when she started writing them down and write you know trying to write it in in in, in poetic form if you will you know, when, when you're talking about, you know, deep subjects, suicide, things like that, there's a lot of things in that, that, you know, you, you, you know, I'm sure she was thinking twice about, can I write this down? Right. So, so yeah, I think you have to get out of your own head when it comes to being a critic of your work, at least on the first pass, right. First pass, you get the story done, you get it down. Then you go back through and you say, okay, uh, oops, I, I had a bad habit. I would skip from first person to third person just at a whim, you know, and, 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 and now that I know what the persons are, I'm going, well, wait a second here. I want this whole thing to be in third person. I want it to be, you know, in the past tense because that's what most people like books to be. But when I'm first writing the book, it's hard to tell what tense it's going to be in. It's far, hard to tell what, 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 uh, whether it's going to be past tense, present tense, first person, third person, because I just want to get the story. I want to get the story out of my head as fast as possible so I don't forget anything. I, I hear it as the voices inside are telling it to me, if you will. And, and then once I get it down, I want to go back through and edit it and all of that, which is editing is just a drag and we can talk about that too. But yeah, we, you have to get out of your own head. Which we certainly will talk about that editing in a few minutes, but I want to stick to that first initial thought process of, pen to paper, fingers to a keyboard, however you want to put it. Because I hear over and over again from people who have said, oh, I want to start a book. I want to start writing a book. I want to, I want to do this, that, and the other. 
And then they then they say the initial follow up is, I want to start a book, but all the good ideas are taken. <laughs> all the good ideas are taken, and it's never going to be an original story because there's no such thing as originality right now. Which I would say I disagree. If you read David David's books, which you can win one, which we'll be talking about later on, mm -hmm. I would highly suggest that um, there are original ideas out there. It's how you put your spin on it. Yes. For the independent authors, and I know you do run a run round table with independent authors on a podcast, which we'll plug here in a few seconds. Awesome. Uh, how how hard is it for independent authors to come up with a not not an original idea but a unique idea that is their own for me it wasn't it, it wasn't difficult because you know I, I i had the perfect childhood for a horror author right yeah every day after school which know, if you haven't listened to our first episode with dave and i would highly recommend you go back because you will learn how weird of a childhood David actually had. But anyway, <laughs> exactly. go ahead, David. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, watching horror stories after after school, watching Dark Shadows, you know, watching horror movies on the weekend, stuff like that. So all of that, you know, I, I pull from the different areas. Uh, but even, even that, you want to make a unique story. So my latest book, it's, it's a zombie story. So, I mean, that's been told over and over again. I'm not sure which season of The Walking Dead that, that, that we're on now as far as that goes, but that genre is, is, is very tapped, if you will. But the good thing is people want that. People enjoy that genre. In fact, you know, the reason I call this one a love story more than anything else is because it was sort of my payback for all of the zombie stories that I love, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that, that's why the title is, is what it is, is, is I'm wanting to pay back. So when I was writing it, one of the things I, I made sure of is that things were unique in mind as far as for how I covered the zombies. Uh, one friend of mine, he, he pointed out, he goes, your book actually made me think of what I would do in some of those situations. He goes, I like to think I'm a good person, but you know, given these things happen to this individual, would they make the right choice or would they be selfish? Would they do what have you? Uh, you know, I don't want to give anything away out of the book. But there are certain circumstances that, you know, we like to think that we'd be good people. But I'll be honest, if it was my family that I was trying to save, I'm going to be a good person to my family. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, I like to think that I would do the right thing, but I can't guarantee it. You know, not, not on the first, first blush, right? Um, so, so, yeah, so I think that an independent author can find unique things. Uh, there's an old saying that everybody has a story to tell, right? It's just, you know, does anybody want to listen to it or pay for it? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the problem. But, uh, but yeah, I think you can find something that's, that's unique to you. Uh, the other thing is, you know, for me, horror was just what I wanted to write, you know, as, as far as things go. I didn't, I didn't have to think about it because I had the horror story in my head for years before I started writing horror. And, and, but for others, if you're just thinking, hey, I want to write, but I'm not sure what type of stories I want to write, look on, you know, Amazon's reports, see what are the, you know, see if there's any genres that are open that aren't being served and pick one of those. Uh, I've got another friend who uh, he writes uh, uh, Russian uh, fiction, but it's from like the 1937, I think is what it was. It's called Stalin's Door. And, and it's, it's a great, you know, great fictionalized thriller, if you would, uh, of, of that time, which Stalin, you know, was very, very dangerous and evil person as, as far as things go. But he picked that genre and, and I think he's doing very well in it. So again, it's something that for you, you know, being new, if, if you like Westerns, hey, Westerns right now, I think are being underserved because, you know, there's not as many people out there writing Westerns, but you have some very popular TV shows that are Westerns. So I would, you know, if I was starting out today, I might consider writing a Western just for the fun of it. So I want to, I want to go back to the round table that you moderate and you also, uh, you, you give advice to authors as well. And you let mm -hmm. other people come on and talk about their books. One area I, I want to know from your discussion with other independent authors, and that's not just from this year, that's not since the start, but since you've been doing this, what is the, 
how hard actually do i want to say how hard i'll ask the question then you can try to answer it in the way that you want to whatever way you want but the conception of a story is the first the biggest part of any the writing process i would assume getting the idea and starting the process the actual conception of the idea and putting it down on paper is probably one of the hardest ideas because you need to like i'm not sure with you or with your round table group that you have but I storyboard everything. I I've storyboard over the last three months of how this show is progressing, where I want it to go, what like certain weeks, certain months, and now I know that June's going to be Independent Author Month. So I storyboard how things are going to be laid out for an independent author, and I think in, in any sense, any author. Is that one of the? I know you say the first thing is you got to listen to your first critics, but. After you listen to your first critics, and even before you give it to your first critics, actually, actually, I said don't listen to your first. Don't critics. don't don't listen to your first don't critics listen, because don't. they're going to be they're going to be too harsh, and and all that. So yeah, so you. Oh, you know, I apologize. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I just want to make sure it's 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 one of <laughs> you can take their advice, but don't take it to heart. Right, That's don't right. let it stop you from producing because somebody said, "Oh, look, you misspelled everything." <laughs> it's, yeah. Well, you try and write a book and spell everything right. Exactly. Ah. exactly. But I want to talk about conception. The, yes. the concept, not like immaculate conception, but conception of the actual, the, the story and how it's going to progress. Now, every author is going to be differently. Some, uh, some will start the story and just write it and see where it takes you. And uh, you've said numerous times on our show that you, that's how you do it. You start out and you don't know how it's going to end. You don't know who's going to die sometimes. And sometimes you're like, oh, sorry, your dad didn't plan that out, but now you are. So yeah. is it better to do it that way? And I know you're going to say everyone has their own different opinions, but let's, let's talk about you and what you hear. Is the overwhelming opinion that to write out an actual synopsis before you write the actual book a better idea or so you can understand where you want to go or like you, write it and see where it takes you? Which one do you see more independent authors doing? Well, that was a long-winded question to ask. I, I like so, the question. <laughs> I like the question. So so I did a lot of research. So, so it was one where when I wrote the first book, that just came to me. It, it came to me as I was writing it because it was, you know, based on a childhood event and all, all of that. Uh, so it was something that I'd had in my head for a long time. So that one was one where that was just pure organic. No, you know, I, I did research, but I'd already researched the topic before it was shadow people, but I, I'd researched the topic before just for fun. So I, you know, I consider myself a, an expert on shadow people. If, if, if anybody needs one, you know, but, uh, so, but it, it's something where I didn't have to do a lot of that research, but when it came to the story, it was one where I just started writing. And I did not storyboard. I did not do an outline or anything. So, so then during the editing process with that one, you know, my, my cousin, who was my editor, Megan, she's, she's wonderful. She said, uh, she was like, well, you know, I'd really love to know a little bit more about this character. So I'm like, you know, that's a great idea. So I, I actually added a, a, a chapter on that, on that character and thought it worked out pretty well and, and fit. But it was something where that came about simply because of some prodding from, from her. Uh, but as far as for the story itself, it was just, again, it was just organic, just, just you know, start, start typing and you're done. And, and I was getting about one to two chapters a night at the time. So that was huge. I was, I was very, very... Is, is, that a win? Just, is that a win to some authors? Like, to me, um, I would assume, like, getting a page out would be like, holy crap, I got a page. I'm so happy right now. I'm going to stop. I go away for a weekend. That <laughs> took a lot out of me. But for you and is, for a lot of authors, is two, like, a chapter or two chapters, like, a massive win when it comes to sitting yeah, down yeah. and writing? It, it, it's one where, for, for, for me, on average, I was getting a chapter a night. When, when th with that story, I was getting a chapter to two a night. In my other books, I was getting a chapter a night. Uh, and and that was that that was huge. Uh, now in the serial killer story, I'm spending you know 45 minutes to to an hour going, okay, what's the title of this chapter going to be? Right? 
and, 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 and so it's not flowing out as well. In fact, it may be one that I put down and pick up something else, right? Just so I can say, hey, you know, I know I've got, you know, I've got eight chapters done, but I've got to get, I've got to get more. So, and I'm just, you know, again, it's, it's one where it may, may be where somebody publishes it after I croak. Um, so, but for me, the second book was where I started doing a lot of research to figure out, okay, now that I've got one published, how am I supposed to do this? Right. What comes next? And and as part of that, you know, a lot of the research I did did say that you should follow an outline, that you should create an outline. They even talk about following, you know, if it's a you know supernatural or, or uh, you know, science fiction book to follow sort of a hero arc. Right. Where, hey, you're going to have this is going to happen. Then, you know, we set up the, what the problem is. You know, we introduce the character so you care about them. We set up the problem. We, we have something bad happen. We, we let them solve it a little bit. Then we have something bad happen again. You know, that sort of arc. And so if you follow that arc, that's what people are used to reading in, in stories. And that seems to do very well because they, they're selling a lot. Uh, but that's how you're supposed to do it. Uh, for, for me, people I've talked to, most of them do outlines on their stories. I don't know that they're necessarily following those specific arcs but they do outlines. Whereas for me, I still have not been able to outline a book for the life of me. Uh, and, and part of that is if I know the ending, I'm not going to read it. If you tell me the ending of a book, I won't read it. So, so, so it, it's the same way for writing it. If I know what's going to happen, then, then, then I'm done. So, so I have to write the way I do. I want to take a quick break because we have to, we have sponsors and we got to make sure we plug those advertisers in um, we'll be right back after this quick message uh, we will be back with David when we talk about three topics one writer's block what do you do two character development and three pitfalls that you should not run into when self-publishing so we'll be right back after this quick message from our great sponsors Come celebrate Calgary's favorite cocktail. Calgary Caesar Fest is taking place on May 19th and 20th right here in the birthplace of Canada's official national cocktail. As listeners and viewers of the cross-border interviews with Chris Brown, you will receive 20% off your tickets when you use the promo code CBI Caesars. That's C-B-I Caesars, all one word. Just visit calgarycaesarfest.com and get your tickets today. Welcome back. Uh, if you totally missed that great commercial, I would highly recommend you rewind 30 seconds and follow along because we have a great event coming up here in Calgary, the YY Caesar Fest, home of the great cocktail Caesars is coming to Calgary, coming back to Calgary, I should say. So get your tickets now, use the promo code like the commercial said, and you can get your 20% off. Uh, we are here again with David, uh, independent author. We are talking about independent authorship for our future segment on the show, where we're going to be sitting down for a month long series on independent authors in here in Canada and across the United States. David, I want to talk about writer's block because you, you talked about it a little bit when you were talking about your uh, serial killer uh, yes. book that you're writing and how it takes you about 45 minutes to an hour just to even come up with a uh, chapter title. But how uh, with with a publishing company, you have a publisher who is backing you and saying you need to do this. You have the time frame as an independent author. Writer's block must, must come a little bit harder because you're not on any particular timeline because you are self-publishing everything. So how hard is it for independent authors to overcome writer's block when they are not pigeonholed by a publishing company that is demanding certain things by certain times? Yeah, so, so I think the, you know, number one, if there's any publishing companies, yes, I would accept deals. So just, just come with, yeah, I, I, I'm an independent author because I, I'm also one that, uh, you know, I, I don't want to go through the whole query process, right? 
and and you know i see all of these different independent authors out there and just authors not even independent who are wanting to get their books published in the traditional fashion and just to hear the heartache in their voice about well, I sent out 500, you know, letters and, and I, I got one response back that said, you know, that they might consider it in three years or something like that. So here you are working on your, your, your masterpiece and, and, and you're not getting any, anything back. That to me is just a, you know, no, just, 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 just go ahead and, you know, shoot me in the head or something like that instead. Uh, but again, if there's any out there that just want to publish, sure, give, give me a call. Uh, as far as his details are in the show notes, everyone, exactly. for those publishers who are listening show notes and, and also Netflix, you want to make a move, one of the movies. It's all, it's all good. Uh, no, it's, uh, I, myself, I'm in a little bit different position from other end of, or some independent authors. And in that for me, it's one that, yes, if I make money, I'm very happy, but I have a full-time job that I love. And it's something that, you know, even if I, I, I've told my boss before, even if I win the lottery someday, I'm probably going to still keep doing the job because I love it. It's just, you know, I, we, it's in accessibility and we help people with disabilities get access to websites. Very rewarding career choice that, that I have. And, and I love it. So, so I'm in a different position. As far as for other independent authors, you know, when you, when you hit those writing block things, and, you know, while you may not have a, a, a publisher behind you saying, hey, you have to get past this, you have to get this out, or you might not have a good support system, you might be writing something and everybody that you've talked to said, oh, you, you, why are you wasting your time writing? You know, why aren't you hanging out with us at, at the bar on Saturday nights? What do you mean you're out there, you're, you're, you're writing, you're trying to better yourself? It's the same people that when you start going to the gym, the first thing they tell you is, oh, don't don't go in there and get hurt. I've heard people get hurt when they go to the gym. It's like, yeah, they also get in shape and they lose weight, too. But yes, you know, sometimes they do get hurt. That's um, where you have to go to lose weight. Damn it. That means I have to go buy a membership. Oh, <laughs> oh exactly. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. So so when it comes to the writer's block, the, the biggest thing that I found that helps me uh, is to again, try to get out of your head, right? It's, it's one of, you know, figure out what it is that's causing that, right? So for me, I know specifically what it is. It's the book I'm writing, if I ever finish it, is going to be horrible in some of the scenes that people are going to read. And they're going to just, no, you know, Not read. horrible, bad people. For those who are listening right now, not yeah. horrible, like, oh God, this is a horrible read. Horrible in as in is a horror author <laughs> exactly exactly you're gonna you're gonna read this and you're gonna like it at first and the, the premise of the story is that it's it's somebody who slowly becomes a serial killer so you know the first couple of people that that he, he he may kill you know may deserve it and you're like yeah good for him i would have did that same thing and then, but the person likes it after a while and, and it's like, you know, this is kind of fun and, and the police are chasing me, but they can't find me. So, so, so anyway, it's, uh, it's something where number one, you have to get out of your own head. So for me, for this one, I'm most likely going to go ahead and work on the next book. I'm going to put this on the shelf, work on the next book, uh, you know, come up with the topic first, right? Because that, that's always the biggest thing, but work on the next one. Uh, as far as for if you you can't do that, right, you can't put this one down for a little bit, but you still need to work on it, then I would say change your habits a little bit around writing. If it's something where you've got, you know, hey, you've got your pattern of music you play, you've got the where you set the lights and all that good stuff, hey, change that. You know, write in the daytime, write, write in the afternoon, write at night, what, whatever, whatever your current pattern is, that's part of your block as well. So switch that up a little bit, play different music. I actually have a playlist for every book that I've done that's a different playlist and it gets me in, in the mood for that story. So some of those things may, may help. The other is, you know, have like, if you're using Microsoft Word, it'll read things out loud to you now. Uh, there's other add-ons you can get for Google Docs and things like that that will do the same thing. Listen to your story. And, and see if that helps you think of where it should go next would be what, what I would say. Uh, and then finally, if it was me and it was, it was a specific chapter, a specific event, 
and you did storyboard or you do have it in an outline form, I would skip that chapter and go to the next and come back to it. So those would be things that I would try uh, if it wasn't just your mind doesn't want you to go there. You know, if, if and, and some people like, you know, for, for people who are writing, you know, nonfiction and writing about true events and things like that, I can very well see where your mind may not want to go to a certain event that happened to you in your past. But if so, go to the next chapter and then come back. You know, that, that, that's what I would advise. I'm very much a chronological order type of person. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that everyone out there in the world who's listening to this, who's a potential independent author is going to be the exact same thing as me, but I have to do things point like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, well, so on and so forth until Z. You're saying, and I, and I just want to clarify here, are you saying that like you go A, B, okay, C is not really making sense right now, so I'll skip to D. How do you do that though? How do you how do you progress a story? Because I'm assuming I'm reading a book. I'm reading a book from point A to point B, uh, point A to point Z. I'm not reading chapter one, two, and then I'm thinking, okay, maybe the author skipped <laughs> over chapter three. I'm okay. gonna read chapter seven now, maybe six later. Like I'm going, I'm, I'm hearkening back to like the Dungeons and Dragons books of the 1980s, where you could choose your own adventure. Those were actually pretty fun. Uh <laughs> I agree. I'm just assuming. <laughs> Is it harder though, when you have to skip a chapter as an author to say, okay, A, B, then maybe D, okay. I'll try C again, oh. but maybe not. Let's go on to E then. Like, is it harder to do it that way? Like, just oh, it, it, it definitely would be. I mean, now for me with where I'm the type of person that I have to write it, you know, straight through, I can't skip to that chapter. So I did say on that one, that if you are somebody that storyboards or if you're somebody that takes and writes an outline, then for that, I would think you should be able to skip to another chapter because you know- in Do you know chapter, authors who do that? Uh, I don't know authors that do that, but that's what I would do. Because if you think about it, if you're outlining it, I'm going to know who's going to make it through each chapter. <laughs> and I'm going to know where they're going to end up at the end of the chapter, because I've already got the outline of what's going to happen in the next chapter. So my goal of getting them through this chapter is to get them into the next chapter. So yeah. that's where I think I would do that as far as for skipping chapters. Uh, just an idea, right? And again, that only works if you're the outline format type. For me, I have to write from A to, to, to Z and, 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 and go at it that way. I can't skip around, right? Uh, there might be some things I could skip as far as if I, would, if I knew I had to tell somebody's backstory or something like that, then I think I could have done that as well. In fact, in my latest book, you know, the librarian scene, right? I, I wrote that early on just because I knew it was going to be a fun scene. So that was actually one I wrote out of order because he was a one-off character, right? He wasn't critical to the rest of the story. I'm just going to pause you there for a second. I love how you talk about horror, like killing people, zombies, like death. Like, this is a fun scene. Like most people are like, <laughs> I love candy. You're like, I love death, man. I just can't wait to kill that librarian. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I, you know, it's, you know, that, that guy in the story and, and of course the, the audiobook version of it, uh, he does such a good job with that character being the type of person that, you know, you want to die. You know, everybody listening is like going to be like, I want that guy to die just because I hate their voice. Uh, so, so for me, you know, it, it's one of, you know, again, I, I, you know, Right now, I'm stuck more because of the subject matter than anything else. And, and so the solution to that for me is actually going to be write something else and then come back to it uh, is, is, is where I'm going. Uh, I've even started looking at my fourth book in the series for Keeping the Light that is, is not even with my editor yet, where I may actually make that a full novel and not do it as a novella. So it's about 35,000 words right now. In order to be a novel, it's gotta be 40,000. And there's a lot of expansion I can do on that care on those characters. So I am going back through that one to see about you know, that. And that's also a fun one, it's a haunted house. It's a haunted house with kids, right? I, I, how, I, how can it not be fun, right? And uh, I'm just gonna say that I've listened to, I think all three of your books so far. I just want to make sure. Yeah, I think I've, I think I listened to the second one. My brain is a little scatterbrained right now. But yes, I'm going to say I've listened to all three. You know how to write death. 
you can write 5,000 words on one person dying and it would be a good day for you, okay? So let's be honest, you will make your fourth book a novel and it will be, there'll be just one random chapter where it's just, hey, someone dies, here's 5,000 words on someone dying. <laughs> now that one actually, there's there's one scene in that one that, the, that, that got me. I mean, it was one where, where I'm, I, you know, as I said, I write these things as they come to me, right? I'm not saying I'm hearing voices or anything like that because I don't want the men in white coats to come by and get me. Uh, I don't know if they come to your house anymore <laughs> like they used to, but yeah, I, don't, I don't want that happening. Uh, so for me, it's one w- where I wrote this one scene and I'm like going, man, I'm like, I just, I can't believe that it went there, but that's where it had to go to set up the main character's sort of lifelong event that's going to drive them and all this sort of stuff, this had to happen. And, and there are some things that you have to think about as, as an author, and it's not a dog. I'm, I'm going to say that right out loud right now. So nobody says, I'm not going to buy your book because you kill a dog. But there are certain things you have to be careful of in, in doing. So if you have a dog in your story and that dog dies, you better make sure that there's a payoff for the reader because of that, or they're going to think more on the fact that this dog died than anything else that, uh, I don't know. Did you ever watch that show 24? I watched like the first few episodes. I, the only reason I had to watch it is because Kiefer Sutherland, he's Canadian. <laughs> God bless the Canadian. Yeah, yeah. And, and there was a character in there named Edgar and this move, this show has been on, off the air for 20 years. So I can't think that I'm going to have a spoiler, but anyway, they, they Edgar dies. And afterwards, they they called it the Edgar effect because of how much the fans hated the fact that they killed this minor character who you wouldn't have even thought anybody would have cared about, but they did. So when it comes to, to, to my books, I make sure that the people that are dying, there's a payoff and a reason. So when I say I like to kill everybody in my books, yeah but there's going to be a good reason why they die. Now, maybe it's just wrong place, wrong time, but that's still a, a reason. <laughs> I, I was going to talk about uh, character development, but yes. I think we've, we've talked about that a little bit in this last few minutes, yeah. but let's be honest. I will be the I will, I will reiterate what David just said. Do not kill puppies unless there's payoff. And by payoff, I mean the person who kills them dies a horrible, horrible death. Yeah. So if you kill the dog, I will come for you if I'm reading a book and there's no payoff at the end of the book. Yes, yes. The more you know, Chris Brown. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the other thing, I will say one thing on character development, if you have to make characters that people care about and they either care about them in a good way or they care about them in a negative way. So when it comes to the characters that you're creating, you have to bring them to life. Right. If if this is going to be somebody that's 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 pivotal to the main character, you know, you have to make them pivotal to the to the person reading it to say, wait, I, you know, I, I could see why they would do that now, because I loved little Johnny or whatever his name was and and, and go from there. So so that's one that, uh, that yeah, you have to make you have to make characters believable in the genre. Right. So, you know, if it's a supernatural story or something like that, you, you've got a little leeway and things like that. But if it's a, you know, if it's a straight, you know, hey, if it's a Western, you know, you're not going to have the guy fly through the air, right? You know, you're not going to have them jump 90 feet. You're going to have them jump, you know, six feet, whatever, whatever the average distance at the time is. So you, you need to make your characters believable in the genre and somebody that people care that they lived or died. So yeah, I appreciate you talking about that. I want to talk now, though, about the pitfalls. Yes. Because independent i'm an independent podcaster i'm an independent journalist i i get the crazy random messages on social media all the time hey give us money and we'll totally promote your (laughs) book or hey we can get you nine thousand followers on social media and then you look at their account and they have like 10 followers and you go well when you can show me that you've actually done it yourself maybe i'll have that conversation I can imagine as an author, it probably gets even more harsh when you get more people giving feedback and more people reaching out to you saying, if you help, if we will totally help you publish, we'll do all that and we'll do it for a nominal fee of X thousand dollars. So 
what are the pitfalls that you write up right off the bat for an independent author who is, yet again, pen to paper, fingers to keyboard, what would you tell them to watch out for? Well, the first thing is don't spend money you don't have. Uh, somebody told me today, and it was a quote from somebody else, but I have no idea who the person was because they didn't. Uh, but they said a lot of these scams and a lot of these services, the only person that they've sold anything to is you, right? <laughs> yeah, you've bought that service from them and they've sold you. Now, they, they may or may not do what they said they're going to do. And they may be able to show that they that they did it. You know, one of the ones I tried once was on Fiverr. Uh, you know, for ten dollars, we'll market your book to five hundred bazillion people or something like that, and then we'll send you a report from it. So I was like, hey, it's 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 worth ten dollars. I'll try it, right? I, I can you know quit soda for a week or something like that. And so so I did that. But the report I got back was very interesting. It showed where they had posted my book link on a dozen or so Facebook groups. And of those different Facebook groups, some of them had 100,000 members. And a lot of those groups were, were posting you know, 50 to 100 posts per hour. So the only way that somebody would have seen my book would have been if they were watching the screen right when that person hit post. So it's not like people are searching Facebook for those. Uh, so, so that's one that, you know, there are, you know, there are probably legitimate ones that can help you that way, but the ones I've found so far, you know, are just, you know, purely, you know, scams on who they're, who they're going into. Well, um, how do you, how do you, how do you weed out those? Because I, I agree with you. There's a lot of that, a lot of shitty ones. And I'll be blunt when I say that there's a lot of shitty people out there right now who are just looking for a quick buck, 10, $15. Like you said, they'll post it on a, a Facebook page that has 5,000, so on and so forth. They'll post it, then 10 seconds later, they'll post the other person to pay $10 as well. Yes. But there are people out there, and let's be honest, there are people out there who are good at what they do, and they do cost a little bit of money. So while you might not have dealt with the good ones yet, or if you have, this let's, this is the time when you talk about it, how do you how do you guarantee yourself that what you're investing, because as an independent person, you don't have much money because there's not a lot coming in. So how do you balance that out? How do you ensure the money you're putting out is going to return to you? So what is that, what is that balance for you? And as an independent author, what should that balance be for people? Yeah, you have to figure out what the cost per unit is, if you will. So, so the cost per sale. So that one where I spent $10, what I did during that was I said, okay, during this period of time, I'm not going to do any other marketing, right? I'm not going to, in fact, I slowed up how much I was posting on Twitter and Facebook myself just to see, to give them a chance. The number of sales were exactly zero during that time period. So, so that to me was one that, hey, that was, that was a failure. Uh, in fact, a couple of them that I had talked to first I told them I was going to do that. And they said, well, we're not the right, right company for you because we don't guarantee results. And I'm like, I'm not asking for a guarantee. I'm just wanting to be able to track the results myself and, and make sure that, that, that we're, we're comparing things for, for later books, what have you. Um, so, so my biggest thing is on any of those, you're gonna to wanna to check you know, and talk to them. There's Fiverr tools and there's several others. You know, they have it where you can talk to the person, find out, you know, information about them, find out if they, if they have a success rate and things like that. But for the most part, the ones that are posting on Facebook and Twitter, that's just going to go through the wayside. Now, there may be some other social medias that you might want to try. Like there's this very interesting guy on TikTok who will hold your book or whatever up that you want. And he'll, he'll give a shout out to it while he's standing in the shower. And it's from the chest up. But he's like, he's, you know, a Scottish guy, and it's just funny, some of the stuff. So if you can get something like that that goes viral, that may, you know, save you a lot. There's that book talk thing where people are, you know, talking about their books and things like that on TikTok that, that do pretty well. Uh, so those are things you can do. Uh, as far as for me on Fiverr, uh, one of the people I found uh, was somebody to write a press release for me and also publish the press release for, for my second book. 
because it was something that I had no idea how to do. You have to register for a service, you have to have it in a certain format and all of that. And plus, I can write my books, but I can't write copy about the books that is exciting, right? I'm, I'm writing, you know, I, I'm wanting to tell, and, and then this gory thing happened here in the press release, which is not how you want to have a press release. Uh, so I was very impressed with the person that did the press release. Uh, but as far as other services from them, you know, the big thing is just be careful what you're, what you're asking for. I've even seen some things where, where I really like it. I will write and, and, and publish your best-selling book. So in other words, they're going to write a book for you based on a topic that you tell them, and they're going to make it a bestseller. <laughs> and they're going to do that for 50 bucks. So I don't, uh, I don't think that's a real one, <laughs> you know? but, but there is a post out there like that. And I was like, I, I couldn't believe it. Um, just today, I had a company contact me and, and I won't give them a shout out because I don't want anybody using them. And, but it was an editorial service and they wanted to know about if I wanted to have my book available in print inside of other stores. So right now you can only get my books through Amazon. And I'm like, yeah, it would be great to have them available at Barnes and Noble, whomever, you know, it'd be, it'd be a wonderful thing. And, and so I, I looked at it and their website is very, it doesn't tell you a lot of information on the process. So I called the guy back and said, hey, you know, send, send me information. I get it back and it's a price sheet on what they would charge for different editorial services, what they would charge for marketing services and all of this thing, all of this stuff where it was, looking like a publishing company was contacting me, but the reality was it was somebody wanting me to pay them to do the publishing tasks. And that's just not where, where I'm at. Now, if somebody could afford it and, and all that good stuff, it may be worth doing. But for me, it just seemed like yet another way to scam an independent author out of money. So, so that's why you know, I'm not going to plug them. We, we, we try to believe people online. Yes. And I know that's a hard concept in today's society, but we try to believe people. And there are people who do fall for these uh, gotcha quick, quick uh, get rich quick uh, schemes that are out there. In your groups, in your conversations, what is the outcome of a bad experience with these does it make people want to stop publishing when they do get bamboozled into this get rich quick scheme and i i, I say that I try to say this as nicely as possible but like if i got fucked over pardon my french uh because someone i took advantage of me whether they said hey we can help you publish and I didn't do my research, which I would always suggest everyone do, it would probably stop me from doing a few things. Yeah, I mean, that's why you have to do the research. I mean, I haven't talked to anybody who's not publishing because of it, but one of the other things that I don't- Have really you ever heard of anyone getting bamboozled? I've heard of people, uh, somebody recently had their book stolen through the, uh, somebody contacted Amazon and said, this book is my work. And so they actually pulled all of this person's work off of Amazon. So here's an independent author. All your stuff's pulled off. And they had to go in and prove that they wrote the original work because they had not filed for a copyright. So one of the things that you should do, it, there is a cost to it and there's no benefit other than somebody not stealing your work. But if you are going to publish something independently, you should go... To, to the copyright office for your country. I'm, you know, different countries are gonna have different ones and you should file for a copyright on it so that nobody steals your work uh, because that's something that, you know, it's you basically sign up for it and say, here's, here's my information, here's, here's, here's the book. And then they, they, you know, you pay your $30, whatever it is and they send back, you know, a, a certificate saying, hey, you're now registered. Uh, so that's the only scam I've heard somebody that, you know, that admitted to being, you know, scammed. Now, I don't know how the person got the original document, you know, if they had uh, sent out like to different, you know, some people send out on Twitter and Facebook and other things, hey, would you like to review my book? 
and they send it to them in a Word document format. So that's very easily could have happened in this case. I, I don't know for sure, but the person sent out, you know, convinced Amazon that they owned the book. And so the person had to prove that they didn't, which was- When difficult. in that situation, please, 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 please make it a PDF, put a watermark on that shit and make sure that no one can actually steal your work. I know it might take a little bit longer. Reach out to David, reach out to myself. We will help exactly. happily walk you through that process, I'm assuming. But exactly. Uh, um, I do we do need to take another quick break. Uh, and then we'll back for the last few minutes and we're, we're gonna talk about one last thing, and then we have to wrap up here because I I've double booked myself tonight for some strange reason. <laughs> uh well, today I mean I've totally not double booked myself. We'll be right back after this quick brief message. <laughs> Horror fans unite. The cross-border interviews with Chris Brown is pleased to offer a free audible copy of David Mercer's newest book, Living Death, A Love Story. The book is about Nick, who having suffered the horrible loss of his wife, plays the hero and rescues Jenny from her abusive boyfriend. Deciding that he has one last adventure in him, he invites her on a cross-country road trip. Little did they know that the world, as they knew it, was ending. Visit crossborderinterviews.ca to enter into the draw. Simply tell us your favorite horror film by April 14th and be entered. Welcome back. Um, for those totally who would listen to that 30 second commercial, which everyone did because I know how amazing our commercials are. Um, that commercial break was brought to you by this man himself, David Mercer, who is book Living Death is giving, we're giving away a free audible copy it tomorrow. You have until tomorrow at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time to enter into the draw to receive a free audible copy. We have a lot of submissions. All you have to do is go to our website. Link will be in the show notes and submit your favorite horror film so but before we talk about that a little bit further i want to just talk to uh, to david about one last topic and that is programming 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 um again like i said like we said in the uh the pitfalls there's a lot of people out there who will try to sell you a lot of different things for a lot of different prices and programming is one of them uh, I can tell you on about all my fingers and all my toes, how many conversations that get started on Instagram of, hey, you're a podcaster. We could totally sell you this $199 program that will make your life amazing. It will bring your audio to the next level. I'm like, well, people seem to be listening already. So go shove a duck. But David, as an independent author, what advice, what programs would you recommend to people? And please note, we are not saying that you should, you should go out today and get these programs. We're just saying these are the recommendations that David are giving. So David, what programs would you recommend that independent authors get or use? Well, for the first thing, if, if they want our premier advice, they're going to send each of us a check for $75,000. So if you send us a check, we'll give you some better advice. No. <laughs> and if you send us a check for $100,000, we will promote it on your this show. We will yes. read the book. We will publish it ourselves under I'll our wear name. A -shirt. I'll wear a t-shirt that has your book cover on. <laughs> there, you, there you go. You heard it here first. Hundred thousands are asking price, guys. Anyway, yeah. go ahead, David. Yeah. So, so the big thing on software and, and programming is, you know, know your budget. Right. So you can do a lot with Google Docs for free. Now, one thing to note, if for some reason you lose access to your Google Docs account because Gmail is a free service, it's gone. It's, it's history. So if you don't have the backups and all that good fun stuff, it's gone. I myself actually pay for Google Docs for that very reason. So it's not going to just go away. Um, for me, I do my editing in Microsoft Word. And the main reason I do it that way is I needed to buy it because my daughter's in college and she had to do some of her stuff in Microsoft Word. So I just bought the family pack. Um, so if you have the option to use Word, great. It's a great program. If not, you know, look at OpenOffice. It's an excellent tool. If you're going to be publishing, 
in Amazon anyway, you're going to be using their KDP application to convert it from, you know, OpenOffice can export as Word, and you're going to be using it to convert that into the KDP format to, to input there. Uh, so if you've got, you know, if you've got the money for Word, it's a great program to have. If not, use OpenOffice, it's totally free. Same way is for editing type tools. Grammarly has a great free service. They also have a pay service. So depending on your budget, those are two things. Uh, yes, there are pieces of software for screenwriting and all this other kinds of stuff. I've tried the trials out of those. There's even some that do the storyboarding for you. And for me, I'm not a storyboarder, so I got no value out of those whatsoever. And plus, they were also a couple hundred dollars. So again, I would go, if, if I was starting today, I would go with the free Go with, go with Google Docs or Open Office, and, and, and you would be good to go uh, to, to get the, the work done, right? And then after that, yes, you can use other tools and things like that, but, but at least to get started. And then for photo editing, I use the GIMP. It's free. It's, uh, it's similar to Photoshop. It has a lot of the same abilities. There are a couple, if you're going to have printing that you're doing in a, at a printing press that are easier to do with Adobe. But compared to the you know, couple hundred dollar cost versus free, and since I'm only published on Amazon, the GIMP works fine for me. That is great advice. I can tell you that Grammarly, while they are not a sponsor of the show, but if they want to, they can totally contact us. They should. We, we, uh, we started using Grammarly on a regular basis, and I can tell you it's been night and day with them, and I would highly recommend even just getting their free service. It does actually help out a lot. And you realize how many red squiggly lines you actually do do, you do <laughs> type on a regular basis. Um, so like uh, David said, know your budget and i think that's i think that's a good concept for a lot of people for a lot of people who are listening to this who may not be authors know your budget don't don't spend it inside your budget i know that's a weird concept and i'm gonna go talk to a politician here in a few minutes but uh, <laughs> know your budget <laughs> know your budget and play within it don't spend more than you have it's a weird concept but it is what it is um yeah. actually I, real, quick, real quick to interrupt I, I i read something recently that said that most independent authors only sell 250 books in their lifetime. And that included free as well as pay books, as far as for like, if you're doing Kindle and things like that. So when you're talking about money that you're spending, you know, unless you hit it big, which you, you, know, you very well could be the person that hits it big, don't get me wrong. But if you're talking at the end of the day that you're only <laughs> selling 250 books, that you're making 50 cents a piece on them then that's very easy math to figure out what your budget is so so just you know go, go that way when it comes to it through that so with that i want to bring us around to our final conversation piece and that is the free audible copy of living death and david is about to pop the book up here so that way yeah. that book right there we have been running a contest for the last I want to say almost a month now, well, probably just over a month since March 17th. It ends April 14th at 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So that's 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I will be drawing. So go to our website. Links will be in the show notes where you can type in your favorite horror film. And I can tell you there are some choices. Nice, nice. <laughs> there are some, why do you think that's a horror film? There are some <laughs> terms of endearment. I'm mean, sorry. That's a musical. That is not a horror film. I don't care who you are. If you put in Little Shop of Horrors, I, I understand horrors in the name. It's a musical. If yes. Steve Martin is singing, it's a musical. Um, but go on. You can get a free copy. We'll be doing the draw. We'll be announcing the winner on Monday, the 20th. April, whatever the Monday is after the 14th, so 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th of uh, April, we will be announcing the winner of that draw. It will be published on social media as well. And then those movies that have been submitted, David and I are going to sit down for our upcoming Halloween episode in October. I know it's April, but in October, we will talk about those horror films. We'll take the best of the best. We'll take the worst of the worst. And we'll take the ones that I went, huh? What are you talking about? 
Like, I'm sorry, but if you put in the Wicker Man with Nicolas Cage, which one person did, choices. Choices. Yeah, and <laughs> Human Centipede, I am not going to watch. Just going to let you know that. Uh, I you know, The concept of it, I know, and uh, that's enough for me to think about the concept of it as far as that goes. Uh, but the others, uh, we, we, we will, you know, uh, we will subject ourselves to trying to watch those and see how far we can get in, in whichever top ones we pick. Uh, there could be a fast forward meter where it's, hey, you know, we fast forwarded this hour and 15 minute movie, an hour and nine minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> we saw the credits. The credits we were credits. good. <laughs> yeah. One movie I want to ask about, because it, it was one of the first that came in and I was trying to figure out if this was actually a horror film or not. Do you consider Flatliners a horror film? Oh, yes. I, do, I do you actually? I, I, that would be a... I thought it would be more of a suspense thriller. And, well, it could be a supernatural thriller. That's, is, that's, that's how Amazon keeps rating me as supernatural <laughs> thrillers versus horror. And I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? Kill more people? Uh, but that was one that... Uh, I would accept that as a horror movie. So you heard it here first. If you submit a suspenseful movie that is considered by suspense by Amazon, we will accept it. But if you supernatural, super, supernatural, supernatural, supernatural but that's true. Accepted. But if you put in Barbarella, maybe not. Well, and the hand that rocks the cradle is that horror or is that a love story? Let's, let's, Rosemary's uh, Baby. Let's let's do it. Let's, I, Carrie. But, that's just a, you know, yeah, going to prom. Yeah, that's but prom. give give us your like cult classic people because I'd love to hear. I, I like seeing when they come in. Uh, David has not seen the full list yet. I'm going to send it to him tomorrow, awesome. and then uh, well uh, on the 14th, which is tomorrow as of this is airing, on the 14th he's going to get the entire list, and we're going to go through and we're going to pick out our favorite horror film and maybe it's probably going to be a single and there's a lot of duplicates but if there's duplicates we're going to put those duplicates in a hat and we're going to pick that hat out of the name of the hat um david thank you so much for doing this once again i enjoy it i i appreciate you having me on the show and you know for for everybody out there who's wanting to be an independent author you know, definitely look at Facebook groups and Twitter groups for the writing community. You're not going to get a lot of sales from those, but there's a lot of people that have good information. And the other thing is get yourself on podcasts like this one uh, as, as far as to help promote your work, because it's something of you've got something that you want to market, of course, but you also have information that you can help give out to the rest of the community. And that's, you know, that round table I have was purely just to say, hey, we want to give out information to people to, to help them. You know, part of what, I, what my journey is in this writing process is to give back. So, so definitely talk to Chris, get on his show. And then, uh, you know, if, if you need anything from us, just reach out. We're, 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 we're a, a Twitter message away. For sure. And those who have listened to the show before, you know what I'm about to say. Links to David's information is in the show notes. Highly recommend that you go out and check it out. Remember, tomorrow's the last day you can submit to get a free audible copy of Living Death, David Mercer's third book in the uh, series. I don't... No, the Living Death is a new story. It's it's a one-off story. It may turn into a series. There you uh, go. But it's, it's, it's my payback to the zombie genre. There you go. It's so much fun over the years. Highly recommend you uh, check it out. If you don't win tomorrow, check it out. Go buy a copy of it via Amazon. The links to that will be in the show notes as well. Uh, with that, have yourself an excellent day, everyone. And remember, get it from behind social media. As I just said, reach out to us on social media, but get it from behind social media after you reach out to us and have a conversation with somebody. I know it's a weird concept in today's age where we want to do everything in 240 characters, but at the end of the day, it does help our society and it does make us a better people when we actually talk to people and sit down and have a conversation. So with that, have yourself an excellent day. And remember guys, talk to you later.